Welcome to the Boy the Bullies show. This is Joey Kirkman, your host, J.D. Shapiro. Can't be with us tonight because he is actually directing, uh, uh, he called it a, an inexpensive film out in West Hollywood, a half a million dollars. <laughs> to me, that's a lot of money, but he called it a El Cheapo. So J.D. can't be with us tonight. But our guest tonight is Joel Gudmason. He is the uh, Outreach and Event Coordinator for the Richard Dawkins Foundation for Reason and Science. Uh, welcome, Joel. How are you? I'm doing okay. How's it going? It's going very well, man. Thank you very much for joining us tonight. I know it's late. Well, actually, what time is it where you are? Nine o'clock. I am fully awake. Uh, you go. It's early where you are. It's a little bit later here, so we probably don't have too many listen- listeners here this late at night. So it's also a work night and a school night for many people in this area. Uh, what are you up to today? Oh, just working, you know, living the dream. Living the dream, working for the Richard Dawkins Foundation for Reason and Science. Uh, you guys Absolutely. just got off a big, big uh, uh, book tour, right? Yeah, Richard was uh, promoting his book, An Appetite for Wonder, which is a memoir that uh, starts about the time of his birth and goes up to uh, the publishing of The Selfish Gene. And there's it's actually a lot of good stuff in there, and uh, you get to learn a lot about uh, where he came from and, and so on. Yeah, I've seen a couple of interviews. Um and heard a couple of uh, different co- podcasts online that he's been on talking about the book. It sounds really interesting. How did the book tour go itself, technically, since you uh, book- run it? How did, go, how, how did you do your job? <laughs> well, uh, I'm a little biased, but you know, I, I think the, the book tour went uh, very well. Um, a lot of the uh, content is, uh, is on richarddawkins.net. Um, any, any and all that stuff is going to be found there. We're, we're trying to compile kind of a one page for it, but it's uh, – there's a, there's a few places that we're waiting on a film from uh, before we can get that out, but we're we're working on it. So there's uh, there's some stuff from uh, say George Washington University. Um, I know is is one event that went really well that we're getting video from, uh, where he was uh, interviewed by Jamila Bay, a uh, journalist uh, in DC, uh, which was really really fun. Really really like that. It was one of the uh, the biggest turnouts for um, signings actually. <laughs> We did the signing on the stage, and uh, they actually had to have people sit in the seats uh, on the first level uh, and go row by row to get all the books signed. Wow! Well, very good for him. He didn't. He hasn't always uh, gotten that type of reception in the states, has he? <laughs> Not by most people in our community. Um, yeah, mostly. But uh, yeah, there. It was. It was uh, fun to field the phone calls from some of the venues, you know, having concerns uh, brought to my attention from people who, you know, were like, I can't believe you're bringing this guy on because, you know, he hates the uh, Christians and all this, all this silly kind of stuff. And you know, I had to be like, yeah, yeah I hear you. Yeah, we get that all the time. And we do just kind of power through it because there's not much you can do about, the, you know, free speech. There, there weren't any, you know, legitimate concerns of any kind. So it was just people who disagreed with him voicing. Yeah, it's, uh, exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The, and, and I know you said you guys were in D.C., so that probably wasn't too bad that time, right? Oh no, D.C. was that, great. Um, yeah, he did. Uh, he did some lobbying uh, on the behalf of um, all of us atheists as well. He was on Capitol Hill um, uh, in the beginning of October, going over uh, some some important issues with uh, members of Congress, uh, specifically science education and and the U.S.'s place in science and technology. He was fervently advocating that uh, we not, uh, you know, we, that we keep funding and, and keep researching and keep America as one of the leading um, science countries because we, we're, we're tenuously holding on to, I guess, that uh, that that title. And, and he wants to keep it that way because he, he quite likes America, as it turns out. Right. I know he's quite fond of our constitution, the separation of church and state. Um, I've well, heard him speak about that numerous times, and he says all over the world that's not, you know, that's not the norm. That that's actually, that, you know, the exception is the United States and the Constitution separating the church and the state like that. So um, it's, I think that's really neat that he's, you know, the rumor has it he's going into D.C. and he's lobbying. And he's, I guess you guys are teaming up with. Are, are you guys teaming up with the ACA there in D.C. D.C. or what's Dispel the rumor for me. Uh, no, what's, that, uh, I what's mean, actually we're, we're, going on? 
so we'll, we'll, we we partner with with anyone that that can help us further our goals. So that goes with any kind of allies like the uh, Center for Inquiry, uh, Secular Student Alliance, uh, and and the Secular Coalition for America. Um, you know, they're they they've been they've been a big help um, recently, and it, I don't know what, what what else to say about that. I mean, they've been uh, they've been a big help, and and like I said, we'll work with basically anyone that's going to help us. Uh, further the goal of secularism. We, we love teaming up with people. Um, there's 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 greater power in numbers, I must tell you. Yeah, and it, there's greater power, you know, depending on where you put the numbers. I, I think I've, I spoke to you briefly about this before. Um, I started spending time at, at the General Assembly here in North Carolina, um, in my home state, and going to the General Assembly, going to the committee meetings, and meeting politicians, meeting some of the lobbyists, I learned really fast that that's where you have to be. You have to play at that level to affect real change. So it's really, uh, I think, it, if the atheist, agnostic, skeptics move, if, if we're growing in that direction and we actually have a lobby out there, like the Richard Dawkins Foundation, um, every atheist and every agnostic and every skeptic and every anti-theist listening should definitely support it because that that's really where the change is made because most people are debating you know politics on Facebook or on Twitter they don't have a clue how the game is played they just watch the news and they they you know they kind of regurgitate the information they've they've heard but they're almost clueless as to how the real you know political game is played so we need folks there lobbying for us no I totally agree um, I mean that's where you're not going to affect the change on the internet. I mean, you can sign petitions and stuff, but if you really want to do something about it, you actually have to go to where the decisions are being made. I totally agree. Right on. So now, where did you go to school? I know you have two uh, degree, one in linguistics and mathematics. Yeah, I went to um, I went to the Metropolitan State University of Denver. Which uh, gained university status uh, the semester after I graduated. So, go my school. Um, no, I, I do <laughs> hold. A, I have a degree in linguistics, and a, my math degree is theoretical math. So, um, useless is uh, the the other word for that. Um, for that degree. <laughs> I mean, I know a lot of. I don't know about that. Uh, we did you a lot of. You food. have a job. <laughs> hey, no. I, I mean, I, I did a lot of proofs and I did a lot of logic, but I mean, as far as application goes, theoretical math is is not the way to go. Love linguistics, though. That's like my favorite subject in the whole wide world. Right. It's a science. It's kind of the scientific study of language, right? Indeed. Yeah. It's. Uh, well, and, now, it's funny. What, what what uh, what sort of inspired you in that direction? Well, I took a uh, took a class uh, in college. It just kind of happened upon it, and it was about language and I it was one of those classes you just take just because it looks interesting and you don't quite know as a freshman or sophomore so I was still playing around with a minor or what have you and after I took that class I not only did I ace it but it was like it was it was interesting in a way that other things were not interesting um I don't know how how to explain it I mean everyone has that subject or that hobby or that thing that's like that's what they like and there's no explaining why it is um it just clicks for them and that's kind of how I how I was with that. Um, my my favorite subject in linguistics is um, it's the tie between historical linguistics, uh, the study of you know how languages evolved from common ancestors, so on, so on, so on, and a few other interesting things. Uh, and then uh, phonetics uh, and the the study of sounds themselves, uh, not not like not not phonics, but phonetics, a totally different thing. Um, <laughs> phonetics. You get to study. I got to study um, a language that's dying. If it's not dead yet, it's called uh, Mocho. M O C H O. Uh, it's a language spoken on the border of Guatemala and Mexico. Uh, it has uh-huh. the last count. Last count when I was in college a few years ago. We're talking about 30 speakers. Most of them in their 60s, 70s. Sometimes uh, some of them in their 80s. So the language is on its way out, and I got to transcribe some of that. And that really that really sparked my interest in, in sounds because you you got to know quite a lot about sounds and how they're made and, and a lot of other technical things to be able to listen to a language you've never heard never will hear again 
and be able to transcribe it into uh, international phonetic alphabet. I, I, I really uh, I, I admire phoneticians more than I think any other kind of linguist. Wow, that's, um, really, that's really interesting. So you didn't have an aunt or an uncle that was like, "Yeah, get into linguistics." That's the way. <laughs> that's the path to. Yeah. Yeah, that, it wasn't even because of that. I I, it, I went to college to learn what I wanted to learn. I wasn't there to, you know what I mean? It, it, the getting a, a career was kind of a, uh, an afterthought. I, I approached my education as like, well, what do I want to learn? I only have kind of one one time on this earth, and if I want to know anything, what do I want to know? And I want to know that. So, I mean, all well, that's career perfect. began. That's great. I think <laughs> but, that's hey, the future you know, anyway, really, if you ask me. Yeah, my I mean, fortunately, my my atheist activism landed me at what I consider probably my uh, my dream job. So I can't I can't argue too much uh, with the path I took. Yeah, that's right. I kind of uh, I took a little bit of a similar path in that I didn't really care about I didn't I didn't have a set career path. Um, where I, I grew up in uh, the, what, what we call the ghetto. <laughs> government assisted homes. I grew up in a really rough neighborhood, so I had a just misdemeanors, but I had a criminal record by the age of seventeen. <laughs> just looked like drinking oh. underage, getting in fights and stuff like that. But just having those little tiny misdemeanors on my record actually, you know, cost me get cost me a lot of job opportunities early on. So what that did was it steered my you know my thought process into uh, uh, self employment, and, and I became an entrepreneur and became self-employed. So those bad things that happened early on in my life actually steered me in that direction. So by the time I went back to uh, went to college, I chose the courses I needed to work in my field. Sort of like what you were talking about. I didn't really have a – I didn't care about a degree, actually, even though you have dual degrees. I, I didn't really care about a degree. I, just, I, I, I was hungry for the subjects that I wanted to be a part of. So when you – Landed your dream job at the Richard Dawkins Foundation for Reason and Science. What was that resume like? What kind of questions did they ask you? How how did your <laughs> background in mathematics and linguistics fit in with what they wanted? Uh, not a, uh, well, I mean, just that I was able to go to college to support myself and got no thing. Um, <laughs> but aside from that, I mean, what 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 uh, they really looked at was the fact that. You know, I, I've had so much experience just in the movement and, 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 and doing uh, movement things, as it were. You know, I, I was a president of my uh, student group at, at, in college. And then okay. uh, when push came to shove earlier this year, uh, Richard was coming to Denver. And uh, they, they kind of needed someone to, to get a, a venue for him and, you know, get an event set up in a very short amount of time. I think I had a month to get it set up, less than a month. And in, in reality, and uh, somehow pulled that off <laughs> to, you know, uh, I mean, I, I'm always going to be hard on myself, but, you know, fairly successful given the, you know, parameters and so on. And uh, and then I was, uh, they they liked it, and they they came back to me with an offer, and, and that was about that. I mean, that was, that was my resume, I guess. I mean, I did send them a formal resume, obviously, but um, yeah. as anyone would. But as far as uh, like the interview, the interview was was that, and so um, that that's how it happened. It's it's kind of weird to me because just before that, um, I was barely scraping by, you know, working in retail. So I I I got I have a I have an appreciation for this for this job. Like I I, I must tell you. Well, you must be doing pretty well at it, man. I, I kind of, um, you and I have fun together on Facebook, kind of jousted back and forth and posting crazy things. It's, it's a little different for you. For you, you you live in Colorado. Um, I, as I said earlier, I live in the Bible Belt, so I've alienated about half my family and <laughs> two thirds of my friends. But you know, I think our movement is really important because, and I, and I am starting to see. A little bit of a tipping point here in the Bible Belt. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if uh, you know if Sam Harris or Dawkins made it back this way. Um, besides the larger universities, if they came to some of the smaller towns, because I know Dawkins was at he was at Duke University last year, and from what I heard, I didn't go. But from what I heard, um, they had to set up big screens outside because he sold out the theater, 
and uh, so many people showed up, they set up big screens outside just so more people could attend the lecture. And here's another funny thing I heard. The lecture was about science, not about religion. But he, he did this entire lecture regarding biology and science. And I, I heard at the end of the um, at, the, at the end of the lecture, every single question from the audience was about religion. And I think there's a lot of people here. That's the tipping point I'm starting to see is that a lot of people here are actually either coming out of the closet backing out of fundamentalism at least and becoming more moderate Christians or they're just kind of saying you know what I'm sort of a deist now I'm starting to you know see that more and more and more and I, you know obviously I credit Hitchens and Dawkins and Harris and the, the usual guys for writing their books and you know being powerful voices in that arena what you're you are an activist in that arena because like I said I follow your Facebook what drives you <laughs> what drives me? Um, what drives you in the activism of kind of fighting, you know, religion? For lack well, of um, phrase. The uh, the the irrationality that that comes with um, wish thinking in general, as as Hitchens put it. I always like every time ever, ever since I heard Hitchens put it that way, wish thinking. Um, that really covers a lot of things. It's not just religion. Um, <laughs> yeah, it does. I. I I mean, in, in, in reality, um, I, I look at myself um, as an activist for both atheism, which is, in, in a sense, it, it needs to happen insofar as it needs to be the default position for people. If they want to go on believing stuff later, it's fine. I just don't want laws made about it. Um, the other thing, though, in order to, in order to make uh, an atheist activist whole, or at least to make the movement whole, you also have to advocate for skepticism in the sense that you want to advocate for critical thinking, uh, scientific method used in all uh, aspects of life and so far as it's possible and so on. Um, that you, you have to do both, um, mainly because we don't want a bunch of atheists that also think Bigfoot exists. <laughs> we want a bunch <laughs> of atheists that, that are thinking critically about things. Um, and I mean, you know, and, and I'm not, that, that isn't to say that uh, every atheist is the best critical thinker or anything else. I mean, the atheist group is like any other group, good, bad, in the middle, you know, all over the place kind of thing. Um, right. So, but yeah, you, I, I really believe that there's, there's more substance to, to the movement of atheism if we incorporate, we bring in our skeptic friends because they're, advocating for things that we need for our movement. We need to be able to tell people that things are silly and that there's a method for finding out knowledge. Atheism in and of itself obviously doesn't provide that. It's, it's a statement of non-belief. Right? Okay. So right. you don't believe in God. Now. So um, at least insofar as having a, a toolbox of, of, uh, of things to bring to bear to the situation, I really think skepticism is going to help atheism uh, big time, and vice versa. Um, the less people you know, that uh, believe in God that also don't believe in aliens abducting them, it's a good thing. We need more rational right. people. And if I can just interpose for a second, Dawkins is really, he does a really good job of, of driving home truth. People will ask him all sorts of questions, you know, about karma, what about this, what about that? He's like, well, I just want to know if it's true. It's not that I'm trying to necessarily fight every religion you know he's not trying to fight every fight there is to have he just wants to know if something's true and so i really love the fact that he's making the the scientific method more palatable for the layperson in in, in his recent conversations um he's speaking more on a, a level that like people uh, i'm i'm one of those people he's speaking more on a level that people here in the bible belt can understand whereas you take hitchens Jeez, I'd pick up his book and I'd have to have a dictionary right beside it, and it's like every three minutes. And Dawkins has a wonderful vocabulary, but I've noticed over time he's kind of, you know, for lack of a better, better phrase, he's had to dumb it down a little bit. Um, and I, I think that's a good thing. It was a good thing for me because <laughs> I needed it dumbed down a little bit. But he's really oh, no, smart I, I, kind of pinpointing the scientific method and what that means, how you can use that in everyday life, in your relationships, how it functions. In anything. I mean, yeah, I mean, I, I try and do it as much as possible. You know, when 
you know, there's been a few tragic things that happened to some friends of mine recently. And my response isn't, you know, oh, it, it's not the religious response. My response is it, it, are, are something like, you know, you need to remember that person for, you know, the good things, you know, and keep them in your, just, just remember them and, you know, just, you know, remember what was good about them and how you love them and so on. And that's probably the best way to, to, to honor that person. I can't think of a better way because I don't, I don't know of one without it being either grandiose and overly symbolic and more for you than anyone else. It's kind of selfish, I think, uh, to each their own though. Um, but I, 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 that's how, that's my, that's my comfort. I don't know how else to do it. I mean, when, when bad things happen that you can't change, um, the, you have to be healthy about it, acknowledge that it's happened, you know, and try and take what good you can from it. And then, you know, well, I think I just mean like, it's, it's, it's like in terms of how you carry on your day-to-day life when you, you know, how, and, and how, for, for me, how I raise my children, it's, it's how you can use these methods of reason and logic and kind of, it's kind of the scientific method to deal with everyday life, not just the afterlife issues or how do you deal with something when something, or how do you deal with, with a tragedy, but how do you deal when the person comes to you with a different kind of, you know, a different denomination or a different religion or, or when they try to de- sell you some line of, you know, caca some other way. That's, I just think Dawkins teaching, you know, that scientific method in a lay person's terms has really helped me a lot. So I'm kind of hoping he comes, has another book tour and makes his way through, you know, to the Bible belt here because, People like him are needed here more than ever because we, like in North Carolina where I live, the uh, religious right has a super majority. And when I say a super majority, oh, yeah. I mean they even have the state Supreme Court. We actually have religion written into our state's constitution now. It actually refers to not just the creator, but it refers to a gender now. It says it refers to him with a capital H. There's also another, um, I think it's Article 5, where it states that. No person that you know that doesn't know God can be elected. Now, even though federal law supersedes that, we still have that in in our constitution in my state today. Yeah, um, that's, that's the kind of shit we deal there's, with. There's there's what six other states like that? Um, I think right. There's there's still six other ones that have a similar law, and that's that's horrible. Got to be at least six. Yeah. yeah, the last yeah. In Kentucky, it's happened. actually a, a misdemeanor to denounce God. Oh, that, that it's still silly. <laughs> like there's, 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 there's no way to make that law make sense. Um, I mean, <laughs> let's put, I mean, let's put it this way: you go to any Christian and you ask them, "Hey, would you support a law that said no, no Muslim or no Christian could be?" Elected, and of course they're going to say no. And you say, okay, so why can't you apply that standard to other people? What, what is the what is the problem with being consistent? Uh, yeah, and, and and the answer is always special pleading, or at least most of the time it's special pleading. Well, all the religions the right one. Okay, I heard you. I heard you a hundred times say that, and you still you yet to prove it. But okay. Um, anyway, <laughs> um, you can you can pass that well, off. I'll tell you, um, if you yeah. if you spend time here at the General Assembly, if you ever get a chance to, I mean, I mean, you see it already. But I've been to committee meetings where they're talking about environmental issues, and you you have a, a religious right person, and I've heard it with my own ears where they say they they, they negate the environment because Jesus is coming back soon, and and that wasn't even the worst moment when that happened. I was obviously when that person said that, I was obviously in shock. But what? what 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 crushed me was the here here he, that he got you know the agree the people in agreement that was in this room and uh, I, I just thought this state has become the twilight zone and it, it kind of brings us back full circle it's it's why it's so important for non believers atheists agnostics skeptics or Christians who believe in the separation of church and state who understand why that's important because it protects you know both the church and the state it's important for us to have a voice with the politicians, with the politicians at a lobbying level. Um, you guys have a newsletter that you put out. How can people subscribe to that? And, and, and not only that, but tell us why that's important. 
Well, right now uh, we're we're building we're we're going to start building a huge database, and we need uh, we want uh, people that can uh, help us take some action and be and be ready to be informed about taking action. And that's what the the newsletter is really going to help um, signing up for that. You're also going to get um, save our secularism alerts, which will give you um, uh, the opportunity to help us fight specific things. Uh, the most recent one we did was about the vaccine outbreak in in Texas, which was absolutely awful. Um, I don't know if you heard, there was a, yes, yes. a, a pastor, the, the pastor down there, I think it was a Kenneth something, uh, that, that guy, I mean, I don't even want to really mention his name because he's kind of, <clears throat> he's kind of slimy, um, going up and telling people yeah. to not get their vaccines, you know, because it causes autism. And, and of course they were backpedaling and their PR was, I mean, it, it was so funny to watch their PR lie to everybody when the reports are completely opposite. Um, and right. so we're, we're, we're always looking out for stuff like that. Um, and yeah, so the newsletter is going to be the, the way to not only stay up on RDF kind of stuff like what's happening with the foundation and what projects we're working on and what's coming up and what's new, but you're also going to uh, be able to stay on top of the issues that are, that are affecting us um, here and, and eventually kind of worldwide. And you'll be able to, it's important uh, sign up. That- Sorry, it's uh, it's really important to go to richarddawkins.net and sign up for this newsletter, and I'll tell you why. Uh, it's what the churches do. The churches, it's not that the uh, religious people are organized. It's their organizers that has, you know, it's the lawyers and the lobbyists that live in D.C. that organize these churches and organize these power groups. They've built these, like Ralph Reed and Pat Robertson, they've built these massive databases where they can literally – change elections overnight with uh, with phone calls and voter guides. And that's I think that's what you're getting at with the newsletter is what Dawkins is trying mm-hmm. to build is a coalition of people who can get the information, make a decision, get out there and vote. Let's start changing this. It's going to take some time, but we have to get involved. And, you know, I, th- I thought about starting a small chapter here, but now that I've learned about what you guys have going on, I'd rather push that, you know, no, indeed. Um, so just to, I mean, I can wrap this up kind of quick. Um, if you want to learn more about the projects that uh, Richard Dawkins Foundation has going on, you can go to richarddawkins.net uh, uh, forward slash projects, and you can find out about uh, those there. Uh, we also have, we have some new stuff coming up in 2014 that you're going to want to sign up for the news that report too. There's some big stuff coming up, uh, some big announcements happening. Um, and, you, and you can sign up for the newsletter. It's right on the front page. Uh, Richard Dawkins done it to sign up there. Uh, just need your name and your email, and you'll and you'll be signed up and ready to go. Um, please do confirm uh, that you'll you've got a confirmation email. Make sure you confirm your stuff so you get on our list. Okay, good, great. All right, we've got about 50 seconds left. Um, you're moving to D.C. pretty soon. What's going to be your function there in 30 seconds or less, Joel? Sorry about that. What are you are you going to be part of that movement? Uh, I'm going to be uh, moving just to our new offices there, uh, same role, but um, it'll be it'll be in the actual uh, physical office now, and be very excited to be there and helping out with uh, everything that's going on. Awesome, man. Well, listen, uh, I, I really appreciate you uh, joining us here on the, on the Boy the Bullies show. Uh, you can uh, find us, obviously, at boythebullies.org or facebook.com slash boythebullies, and uh, – Make sure you go to richarddawkins.net and sign up for that Make newsletter sure if it's the last thing you do. Uh, for that Make newsletter sure if it's the last thing you do. Sign up. Uh, All right. Thank you, jo- uh, Joel, and we'll talk to you soon, buddy. Well, cool, thanks so much. Mm-hmm.